Hello everybody, my name is uh, Ori Calvo and I am uh, the head of uh, front -end technologies at uh, Trainologic and today I'm going to talk about uh, WebWalker. Uh, it's mostly going to be a session demo. I'm not going to use uh, the slides too much and then I will use as much code as I can in order to uh, explain uh, the ideas behind the web WebWalker. Um, So all the samples that I'm going to display, to present to you during uh, that session uh, were already uploaded to GitHub. So you can just type uh, at Google uh, GitHub space Trainologic and it will take you to the repository where you can find all the samples. So uh, basically JavaScript is single threaded. That means that you can only execute one task at a time. So if, for example, the application is executing some kind of a, a CPU intensive operation, that means that all other activities are blocked. And that includes also CSS reanimation. So let's look at a simple uh, example. So I, this is just a simple Angular 2 application. Um, um, here is the main file, which bootstrap the application inside the browser. Uh, in addition, here is the, the app module, which just imports the browser module. And there is only one component inside the application, and that component does nothing. So the only work that I'm doing now is just using some kind of CSS animation in order to curate the, uh, um, um, a progress bar. So. Let's look at the CSS. Here you can see the CSS3 animation. Let's execute the code. OK, so this is a very, very basic animation. And I just want to test uh, the behavior of the application once I'm, I'm trying to integrate a CPU intensive operation. So let's try to do that. Um, let's go to the HTML and let's add a button. And let's fix the component. And I already prepared a method named calc, which is quite a simple method, but it basically just spin around for the specified interval. Uh, this is in order to, this is in, in order to simulate a, a CPU intensive operation. So I can invoke the method and send him uh, two and a half seconds. Um, for example, I can also get the return value and just print it into the console. Now let's go back to the browser. And once I'm clicking the button, you can see the animation just stops. OK, and the reason, again, is that JavaScript is single-threaded. Um, there are several solutions in order to deal with that uh, problem. Pro um, I guess that the most uh, common solution is just take the CPU-intensive operation and move it to the server side. Um, Although this is the simple solution, still, it may be a bit difficult if we need to deal with data that resides inside the client side. For, for example, if we need to do some kind of image processing and the image file reside at the client side, it will be a bit tricky to upload the image to the server just to process it at the server side. The, uh, the price might be too high. So usually uh, another solution to the problem is using the script yielding technique. Uh, script yielding means take a long operation and breaks it into smaller chunks of operations. Uh, and after execution of each steps, use the set timeout method 
the state timeout method allows the browser to refresh the DOM, and only after the browser refreshes the DOM, we can continue with the next step. Uh, implementing a script yielding technique is quite complex, and worse, I guess the, 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 the main problem is, is that we can take, uh, not every operation can be broken into smaller chunks. So, fortunately, these days we have web workers, and web workers allow us to uh, uh, execute the code in a different context. So basically, a web worker is a path of execution. It much resembles uh, a thread inside the operating system. We can create as much web workers as we like. And, and basically, it, it's quite easy to create a web worker. One of, one of the benefits of using worker, web workers is that workers are isolated. That means that uh, there is no race condition. We cannot share data between different workers. Uh, so there is no uh, need to protect the data. There is no need to use any kind of synchronization mechanism like mutex, semaphore, and so on. Uh, integrating web worker into existing application is quite easy. Let's try to do that. So that's our component, and now instead of directly invoking the calc method, which is the CPU intensive operation, I'm going to create a new worker. And inside the constructor, I can initialize a new worker instance. And when instantiating a new worker, we need to point the browser to the file that needs to be downloaded to the browser, and that file will be executed under the new web worker. So basically, I'm going to specify app and a worker that I already implemented. So let's specify the name of the worker. Um, once I have the worker in place, and the user clicks the calc button, I can post a message to the worker. Let's create the message. and just send it to the worker. And let's take a look inside the worker. So the worker is basically listens to incoming messages from the main DOM worker. And once the message is of type calc, it executes the calc method. Um, if we try to uh, execute the code, let's do it. we probably encounter an error. And this is probably the, um, one of the basic uh, uh, errors when dealing with TypeScript and WebWalker. Um, you can see that Chrome is, uh, is reporting that the require method does not exist. If we go back to the Walker file, I'm using the import syntax and the TypeScript compiler convert the import syntax into the require. You can see that inside the JavaScript file. Here is the require syntax. And the require method is not a standard method. So it is not supported by the browser. So basically what it means that we cannot take a plain TypeScript file that uses the import syntax and just use it inside web worker. This does not work. So instead, we need to create an additional file and that file needs to create the illusion of loading the TypeScript by the module loader. So I'm importing system.js, which is the module loader, and on then I'm importing the walker.js file. So this is some kind of a stub file, which is responsible for preparing and importing all the prerequisites before loading the worker itself. 
So let's change the component. And now, instead of loading the worker, I'm loading the loader first. Let's go back to the browser. And now, when I click the button, you can see that the animation continues. OK? And the uh, uh, processing just ends. By the way, if I want to uh, receive the returned value of the uh, long computation, uh, we just saw that the worker sends back a message after the calculation completes. So that means that inside the component, I can listen to incoming messages. And if the message is of type calc done, then I can just print out the return value. Again, I'm clicking the mouse. Um, by the way, we can look at the, bra at the dev tools. Let's click the Calc button. Here you can see inside the watch, oh, let's edit, OK, that we are under the main worker. You see that the window variable points to the main worker. But once we send a message to the worker, let's put a breakpoint inside the worker. You can see that the window does not exist anymore, because inside the worker, we we cannot access the DOM, and we cannot access the window. OK, so this is a, a simple uh, a way to determine whether our code is running under the main worker, the DOM worker, or is running under the web worker. OK, that's great. So basically, we just, uh, uh, we just saw that it's, it is quite easy to integrate web worker into uh, Angular 2 application. But according to Angular philosophy, that kind of code should not reside inside the component, right? According to Angular philosophy, a component is only responsible for maintaining the user interface. All other code should move into someone somewhere else, uh, usually a service. So let's try to refactor that code into a separate service. So this time I created a service. I already implemented it. Nothing special here. Uh, you can see that uh, the service is instantiating new worker. It, it also listens to incoming messages. Um, and in addition, it is responsible for sending messages to the worker itself. Um, the service also returns a promise which allows two components to uh, use much simpler code. So inside the component, I can just get rid of all the worker code and instead just use the service. So let's ask Angular to refresh, to inject, sorry, uh, a calc service instance. And let's use it inside the component. So this time, let's put a breakpoint inside the component. So the component delegates the work to the service. Uh. And the service just sends the message to the worker. Again, once the worker gets the message, it executes the CPU-intensive operation and then sends back uh, 
a message to the service. Let's go back to the service. So here the service uh, is listening to incoming messages. And once the message arrives to the service, it just resolves the promise of the component. That's why the component can react to the value. So if I continue with the debugging, you see that the value just arrived inside of the component, which is nice. Um, so basically, we just managed to keep the code inside the component clean and simple. Let's look at it. This is the current code. The component uh, isn't aware that we are using Web Worker at all. But if we look inside the service, we can see that there is a lot of code inside it. And probably most of the code is just about dealing with the complexity of the Web Worker. So my question is, can we make the code inside the server simple and clean just as it is for the uh, component? And the answer is yes, but it's a bit challenging task. Um, it means that we need to take the service and host it inside a web worker. The problem is that once we are hosting the service inside the worker, the component cannot get a reference to the service. Because as, as I said before, um, there is, web workers are isolated from each other, so we cannot share data, we cannot share objects. So the trick is to inject to the component, not the real service, but rather a proxy. And that proxy can just marshal the request to the web worker. Um, there is a very nice feature for ECMAScript 6. And that feature is named proxy. We can use, uh, we can create a virtual object using ECMAScript 6, and that virtual object uh, intercepts the invocation and can marshal the request from the main worker to the web worker. Let's try to do that. Sorry. Um, Okay, so the trick is here. Basically, I have a very simple CAC service. The service is unaware that, that is going to be hosted inside the web worker. Um, and now we need to change a bit the component. So instead of injecting the real service, now we need to inject the proxy to the service. So the trick resides inside the app module. And instead of registering the real service, I'm going to register a proxy to the service. So let's define a new uh, registration entry. Let's call that calc service. And let's register a factory into Angular. I will use a method name create proxy factory. This is my own method. No this is not part of Angular. Um, and the method accepts the URL for the service that need to be loaded into the web worker. So let's just specify the name of the service. OK, fonts are too big. Great. OK, that was one part uh, of, the, uh, of the solution. And the next thing, we need to fix the component. Because the component should not get a reference to the real service, but instead, we are going to use the token that we just specified. And Angular will inject the proxy to the component. Beside that, you should notice that I didn't use, I didn't change any code inside the component. Um, let's try to execute the application. 
So again, let's put a breakpoint inside the component. And here is the magic. As you can see, the component does not really hold a reference to the real service, but rather it holds a reference to a proxy object, which is a, a, um, a special object uh, inside the browser. And once I step into the run function, you can see that the browser, the debugger, takes me into the proxy implementation, which is my own implementation. And now the proxy can do the smart thing and just post a message to the re remote worker. From that point on, the implementation is quite the same as the previous uh, sample that I demonstrated. So inside the, the web worker, we listen to incoming messages. And once the message arrived, we can just invoke the real method on the real service. Here you can see that this is no longer a proxy, but rather the real calc server that was instantiated inside the web worker. OK, again, from the um, end user perspective, it feels the same, right? I can just click the calc button. Let's remove the, all the breakpoints. Let's remove all the breakpoints. So you can see that I'm still able to click the calc button, and animation still uh, runs smoothly. Uh, and both the component and the service are just clean and simple. This is the component and the servers holds the plain calc implementation. So basically, we just, basically, um, we were able, we managed to, to make both the component and the servers uh, to contain simple and clean code. Uh, but we should be aware that since the component and the server resides inside different workers, it means that each time that the component is reaching out to the service and trying to fetch data, the data is serialized inside the web worker, and then it deserialized inside the main worker. Now, it depends on the nature of your application. Um, the marshalling processing might be too expensive. So my next question is, is it possible to take both the component and the service and host them inside the same worker? This is an extremely challenging task because we do know that a component is responsible for managing the DOM. But inside the web worker, there is no access to the DOM. So that means that the components need to use some kind of a virtual DOM API in order not to really uh, communicate with the native DOM ABI, but rather delegate the work to the web worker. Um, but fortunately, that's exactly what Angular 2 does. That means that Angular offers an abstraction layer that sits between the component and the real DOM. So whenever a component wants to uh, update the DOM, it doesn't really interact with the native DOM API but rather it uses Angular DOM API, and that API behaves correctly uh, according to the execution, the context of execution. So, for example, if the component resides inside a web worker and the component tries to update the DOM, Angular is smart enough to delegate the work to the main worker, and the main worker updates the DOM. Um, let's try to do that. Apparently, it's quite simple to configure Angular 2 application to use that capability. So this is the basic sample. Again, when I click on the calc button, the animation just uh, uh, stops. 
because of the long operation. But this time, I want to use Angular 2 feature, which allows to execute the whole application, both the components and the services, uh, inside the web worker. The way that we can do that, first, we need to fix the main file. We can no longer use the browser platform, but we need to use the web worker platform. So I'm using the bootstrapping API for initiating, for initializing uh, the components inside the web worker. Um, in addition, I need to fix the app module too, because the app module is using the browser module. Instead, I'm going to use the uh, um, web worker module. Let's do that. And last thing, we actually need to define an additional main file, because that main file is going to be hosted inside the web worker. So probably we can just rename it a bit. Uh, this is the worker main file. And let's create the real main file. Now, please uh, uh, keep in mind that I didn't touch the service and I didn't touch the component. I only changed the bootstrapping logic of the application. So Angular has a special bootstrapping method named bootstrap rocker UI. And I, can, and I can just invoke that method and specify the URL of the main file that needs to be hosted inside the web worker. This is the worker main file. But again, this file is using the import syntax, and we cannot directly load it inside the worker. So instead, we are going to use the worker loader. And inside the worker loader, I'm going to import the real main file, which is the worker main. And last one last thing, Angular needs own JS. So I'm importing it too. Oh, okay. The name, right? APP. Um, OK, great. Just verifying that everything is OK. Uh, let's execute the code. And voila. Let's look at the loader, at the web worker. You can see that all the components and the services were loaded into an isolated web worker. This is the component, and here is the service. So now I can just put a breakpoint, click the calc button, and the method actually executes inside a web worker. We can see that using the watch, right? Window does not exist. If I add the self variable, you can see that it points to a worker reference. I didn't change any component, any service, and Angular was smart enough to load both into uh, um, a different, into an isolated web worker. If I look at the calc reference, at the calc service reference, you can see that it points to the real service, not to, the, uh, to a proxy or something like that. On the other hand, if you look at the cold stack, you can see that Angular really uh, making here a special effort in order to, dis to take the event from the main worker and then dispatch it to the web worker. OK, let's uh, summarize. 
Um, so basically, we saw that it, it is quite easy to integrate Web Worker inside Angular to application. You probably want to encapsulate the, uh, the, the, the logic of maintaining the Web Worker inside the service. You can do smart things like using ECMAS script proxy feature and encapsulate all the logic of uh, maintaining the Web Worker inside an infrastructure layer. If you want to go even crazier, you can use Angular 2 feature, which allows you to load all the application inside the Web Worker, both the components and both the services. Please take uh, into consideration that this is an experimental feature of Angular 2, so prepare to have some kind of breaking changes in the future. Thank you.